Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to do learning assignment 7 where we will implement create item functionality in SPFX client side web part application. So let's start it. So guys, this activity is going to be our step 2 activity while implementing the SPFX client side web part application. So let's look into the steps. What are the steps we are going to follow to implement create list item functionality so guys these are the five steps which we have to follow to implement create list item functionality in spfx client side web part development so in the step one we are going to create variables where these variable used to grab the input value from the control so whatever the value which we will write inside the field those values we will keep inside the variable so that we can use it while doing the rest api call once it is being done then we will proceed to the step two where we will import the module which will help us perform the HTTP operations. Once it is being done, then we will proceed to the step 3 where we will prepare the SharePoint REST API URL, body and header. As you know that whenever we are working with the HTTP request, we must have to specify the URL, body and the header that we have already discussed in our earlier session. Once it is being done, then we will proceed further into the step 4 where we will prepare the code to perform the restful call from spfx application at last at step 5 we will create a behavior where on a click of a create button all these functionality should happen whatever we have created from step 1 to step 4 so let's go to the visual studio code and let's write the code for step 1 that is create variable to grab the input value from control. In prior to starting our new activities, I would like to show you what changes I have done in our previous steps where we were missing this level and I have inserted those level and at the last time I have given a message like enter batch and enter level of knowledge. Instead of that it should be select batch select level of knowledge. That is the changes I have done and where I have done that I will show you and it is being done at line number 54 and over here I have mentioned one column that is with the help of TD and within that I have mentioned select batch and at the line number 64 I have mentioned another column which holds the value select level of knowledge. So these two places I have done the changes. If you are following with me, you have to do the same changes. Apart from that, everything remains same. So now let's start our new activities where we will create the functionality for create item. So the first step over here, we need to come to the line number 87, press and enter. And over here, we need to mention that private and the function which I am going to build is the create item. Over here we need to specify the curly braces start and close. Now we will start implementing the functionality to create item. So the first step was to create the variables. And those variables should hold the values of these text box or drop down. To achieve this functionality what we have to write it. Let's look into that. Over here first we will mention void and then over here we should come and we will write where username and over here we will tell that document dot get element by id and over here we are having username and what I have given you can see it over here so you can grab this name copy this this is the id and you should paste it over here so this way whatever the input which you will provide inside this text box it will come to this variable now copy this line and paste it four times because we are having four controls and over here we will mention it is going to be email and here it is we will check that what we have it has text email control txt email then we are having batch and we are having it is ddl batch i remember but let me grab this one copy this one and paste it over here now ddl level of knowledge we should grab and we should tell that level of knowledge and over here we will specify the control id so we have completed our step one so now let's proceed further so guys now we have to perform a step two but first we have to understand why we are going to perform a step two if you remember that while doing the SharePoint REST API call in our earlier session we have used postman tool and from this postman tool we have performed all the HTTP requests like get, post, patch, delete all these operations but from SharePoint client side web part application how do we will perform all these activities we must need a mechanism so to perform all these HTTP operations Microsoft offers a HTTP module inside SPFX framework 
So let's import that module perform the HTTP operations and that is our step 2. So let's proceed further and go to the Visual Studio code. So we are inside the Visual Studio code and we will go up and over here we need to specify import curly braces start and close. We should mention from with the rate Microsoft slash SP hyphen HTTP. So this is the module which help us to perform the HTTP operations and from this module we need some classes. So the first class we need that SP HTTP client. Then the second class we need that SP HTTP client response and the third class ISP HTTP client options. So these three things we needed to perform our HTTP operations from SPFX client side web part application. So guys we have done with our step 2. So now let's proceed further. So now we have to perform a step 3 where we need to prepare the SharePoint REST API URL body and header. So guys if you remember that when we were using the postman tool then on that time we are providing the URL like this then we are preparing our header then we are also preparing our body. Same way if you want to perform HTTP operations from SPFX client side web part application we have to prepare the URL body as well as the header. So let's do it. Let's go to the Visual Studio code and perform the step number 3. So guys now we are into the Visual Studio code and let's proceed further and over here we will write our code. So what we will do we will come inside the create item and then we will write over here. This is for a step 3 and over here we will mention that const site URL. This is of type a string and then we will mention this dot context dot to get the context of the page context we have to write this syntax where we need to mention this dot context dot page context and then we need to specify site and this will return us the absolute URL and along with that we need to specify the API URL if you remember that in the postman tool over here underscore API web list get by title we must have to specify whenever we want to play with SharePoint REST API. So let's grab this one copy this one and then over here we need to put double quotes and inside that we will paste it. So this will generate us the URL of SharePoint REST API. Now let's proceed further and let's do the body part. If you remember in our postman tool what we were doing we were passing the body. So the body which we are passing which holds the value for the title, email, badge, level of knowledge all these fields are the column inside the SharePoint list. So let's grab this one and copy this. We will use it inside our program and over here we will mention that const this is going to be the item body and over here we will tell any equal to and within this we need to specify the values which we have grabbed from the postman and these are the body values which we were passing while working with the postman tool. From the SharePoint SPFX web part application we need to pass the values like this way. Instead of the constant value we need to specify the variable name over here because our variable is holding the data from the control. So we need to specify over here username. This is going to be the email. So we need to specify email over here. Then we are having batch. So we can close this one and it should be batch. And then over here we need to specify level of knowledge. Now next we are having the headers. For headers if you remember in our postman tool we are doing like this. But within SPFX client side web part application we have to write something like this. Over here we need to write const and then we need to specify sp http client options and over here this is of type i sp http client options and then we need to specify over here the body of the request. So over here we will mention that equal to and within that we need to tell that the body is going to be json dot thingify and within that we will pass our item body. Now we are done with the step 3. Now save this one and let's proceed further. So guys next we have to implement a step 4 where we need to prepare the code to perform the restful call from SPFX client side web part application. So let's do it. So now we will write the code for step 4. So this is for step 4 and over here we will mention that it's dot context dot sp http client dot 
post. So guys, we are going to perform the post operation. If you remember, we are performing the post operation like this. Same way, we need to perform the post operation. But to do the post operation, we have to write the code in our SPFX client side web part application. So let's do it. And when we are performing this post operation, what we are doing, we are passing the header as well as the body. So how we will do in our SPFX client side web part application? Let's look into that. So first, we need to specify the site URL. This is our SharePoint REST API URL. And then we need to specify the header configuration. So how we will specify the header configuration like accept JSON and all those things. So there is already a configuration being given. So we need to tell that SP HTTP client dot configuration dot v1 and then we need to specify the body and how we have created the body in the form of this variable so we need to specify this variable over here that holds our body information of the request so over here we will tell sp http client options once it is being done then we need to write dot then and over here we need to specify response and this response is going to be the sp HTTP client response because whenever we are performing this post operation it is going to send us some response so that we are grabbing into this variable and then we are writing a an anonymous function over here and over here we need to specify the logic so what is the logic we are going to check if response dot status equal to 201 then you have to perform these activities so I am going to tell that let status message element equal to this dot dom element dot query selector and over here we need to specify one of the element id which we have created and i mentioned in last session we will come to know about the significance and that id is the div status so whatever the response which we are getting after performing the http operations we need to display inside this particular div so for that i am going to specify the this id i will grab it and i will come over here and i will mention that id so paste it make sure that you are specifying hash over here now once it is being done the next step next we need to specify the message which we want to print so for that i am going to tell that status message dot inner html and the message which I want to print in that div is item created successfully. So guys, this is for the good case. And if you got the failed response, then we have to handle that as well. So we need to tell that else. And over here, we will tell that let status message element equal to this dot dom element dot query selector. And this is also going to be the same hash. And we will tell that div status and then we need to specify the message and the message is going to be the status message dot inner html and the message which i want to print is an error has occurred over here we need to print response dot status as hyphen and over here we need to specify response dot status text so now we have done with the step four so let's proceed further so guys now we have performed the step number four the next step we need to implement the click functionality on the button so that whenever anyone click on create button all these operations should happen whatever we have implemented so far so let's do it 